Good evening. Welcome to the PWSA USA webinar series. Tonight's topic is Coming Together with Purpose, presented by Beth Bush, Director of Operations at PWSA USA. This evening's webinar is slotted for one hour with a brief period for questions to follow. Before we dive into this evening's topic, let's review some housekeeping notes. Please take a moment to write down the dial-in number and access code for tonight's presentation should you become disconnected from the call. The number is 909-259-0023 and the access code is 597-318-046. For those of you using the voice IP option, you may choose the option of dialing in at any time during the presentation. There is a question segment planned towards the end of the presentation. Please note that the dialog box located to the right of your screen has an option for you to ask questions throughout the presentation so nothing is forgotten. Your line is muted to alleviate distractions, so if you have any difficulties during the presentation or need assistance, please use this question box throughout and I will be happy to provide assistance as best I can. Please do not use the chat box, use the question box. If this dialog box is distracting to you, you can click on the orange arrow to minimize it and then click the same arrow to open the box back up and enter questions or comments. An electronic survey will be sent post-presentation and we truly appreciate and welcome your feedback to build upon our series. Now please allow me to introduce our interim co-executive directors, Dale and Dottie Cooper. Hello everyone, uh, this is Dottie Cooper. Dale and I are so privileged to be uh, co-interim executive directors of PWSA USA and we want to welcome you to our first chapter leaders webinar. We're very excited about this. Uh, many of you attended the chapter leaders conference uh, that we had in conjunction with the hyperphagia conference in Baton Rouge, Louisiana this past October. And uh, during that time, uh, we were so energized by the presentations and the information that, were, that was exchanged. Um, we felt so bolstered by the collective power and the excitement that, that just emanated from uh, all the opportunities that we could see that we have to work together. And that motivated us to, uh, to come back to the national office and to do what we could to provide the support that's going to strengthen our state organization. We're totally convinced that our chapters are the strength of our organization, and that's you and the families that you serve uh, in the various states. So our national staff wants to do everything possible to ease the burden of running a chapter of our organization. Uh, we want to allow the chapter to utilize its precious resources to connect families and to support local priorities. So that's what this is all about. Great. This is Dale, and I'm the... Uh I'm the other half of the co-director team. I'm the big ugly one. Uh, this is exciting. In addition to our chapter leaders and our supporters we have on the call, we've got uh, board of directors, executive committee members, and staff from around the country and our, our local office in Sarasota. Uh, this, uh, the Sarasota team is being headed up by, uh, by, by Beth Bush, and she's our director of operations. Beth joined us uh, the first of the year and uh, brought with her a a lot of years, like 20 plus with uh, the Red Cross, uh, at all levels of, of experience, national, regional, uh, local. Uh, she does, um, she has uh, totally control over that entire uh, venue. She has a special talent for working, developing and working with, uh, with local chapters, which is so very important. Oh my gosh, she directs, uh, reports directly to us, but we, uh, we're just a team. We're so delighted to have her on board as, in one of our families. Uh, she's got a beautiful family, got two gorgeous daughters who Dottie and I have both offered to, uh, to adopt, but, uh, but she hasn't given up on that yet. Got a beautiful husband, and uh, they just work well together. Beth is uh, Beth's a dynamite package. She's, in, she's the entire thing, and we're just so welcome to, to have her on board. And uh, Beth, you're on. Thank you so much. That's a hard introduction to live up to. <laughs> Um, thank you, all of you, for taking the time out of your really busy schedules to join us this evening. We really do appreciate it. I know most of us work long days, and so to give up your evening time with your families means a lot to us. Um, 
Over the last few months, as well as previous to my being here, there have been considerable conversations about how to best serve our PWS communities, how to grow and support our chapters, and how to strengthen the entire national organization. Um, you know, what we learned during that time from talking to chapters and talking to volunteers is that there was some confusion about our structure and our roles. We've also been listening to chapters and what their needs are, and we've responded by building resources specifically around those needs. This evening's webinar is our opportunity to share this progress with you and better define our structure. So we're just, again, so excited to have all of you on here and have the opportunity to share with you what we've been doing. So you're probably wondering why this slide tells you who we are. Um, you know, I think sometimes people think of us as this office in Sarasota. And PWSA isn't just the office, it's the entire team, it's all of us. Um, it's a nationwide organization that includes the national headquarters and a network of chapters throughout the country. And that network is just so important. And this is a copy of our mission and our vision. And hopefully this is not the first time you've seen it. And you'll notice under the vision that one of the things we want to be is an internationally recognized leader. And to do that, we must align all of our efforts to make sure that we're doing the right things in the right way and using our resources to the best of our ability. So we do get questions sometimes about, you know, what does our organization do? Is it research? Is it crisis support? What do we do? So this slide gives you some information um, about how the organization was started, and then just some of the things we do. I'll tell you, our staff here at the national office, as well as, as those of you on the ground, are just so busy. Um, I'm in constant admiration of the work that everybody does. And if you look on this slide, just some of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis include medical crisis and family support, um, information and resources for families, providers, medical professionals, behavioral management, parent mentoring. I mean, this is just a small sampling of what our organization does. And we should be so proud to be a part of an organization that provides those kind of programs and services to people who have PWS and those who are affected by it. Who are the people at our national office? Um, this is a small version of our org chart. And there's not a lot of information about what each one of us do, but at least it gives you an idea of who's here. Um, you've heard from Dale and Dottie already. There are interim co-executive directors. We also have Laura Miller, who is our financial development person. We have Ben Karp, who supports Laura and also is responsible for PR and communications. And our financial development and our PR communications team report directly to Dottie and Dale. The rest of our organization falls under what we call operations. So we have chapter support, which is working to um, really build and strengthen our chapters, and that falls under me. We also have our medical and research headed by Jana Lee, which I think most of you have, um, have met or known. She's been here a long time and a wonderful resource. Our family support team includes Evan and Kate, and then we also have Cindy Bell, who works with new diagnosis and parent mentors. And we have Mina Roberto, who works with our Hispanic-speaking families. We have Amy Logan, who's our, our um, administrative assistant. She handles our volunteer programs, our products, um, our mail room, and a lot of the publications that go out to each of you when you order them. Our business office is headed by Debbie Appleby. And Debbie also see oversees our accounting department. And Lynn Sherman is our accounting coordinator. And then in addition to those things, we have other initiatives and projects that are ongoing throughout the year, such as our national conference, legislative advocacy, publications, and our PWS advisory board. So that's just a snapshot of our national office and a little bit of information about what they do. And at the very end of the presentation, there's a contact list that has each of the people, their titles, their email addresses, and their phone numbers. And we're going to share this presentation with you um, afterwards. What are the benefits of being a chapter of a national organization? And you know, in a lot of the conversations we've had um, with chapters, we've talked about how nice it is to be a piece of the bigger picture and not just out there on your own. If you look at the definition of a chapter um, in the dictionary, 
It says a branch or division of an organization. We view our chapters as an extension of our national office, and we just can't reach the people that we want to reach or do the things that we want to do without that combination of the national team and the chapters. So we are all one organization. There's some great information here that um, just helps you understand our philosophy a little better. Um, the shift we've had in terms of really wanting to make sure that we incorporate a collective confidence and a willing to collaborate with each other. Um, it's not the chapters versus national. It's not an us and a them. It really is one organization. And really our purpose is to reconnect with our mission and have everyone work together in the same direction toward that mission. We have a shared commitment. The commitment to our families and the people that we serve is shared by chapters, the national office, all of the paid and volunteer staff of our organization. And what we want to be is not reactive to the things that are going on right now, but future focused so that we can really look at, you know, in addition to the things that we're doing right now, what comes tomorrow and next week and next year? How do we really take this organization to the next level? And in order to do that, it takes all of us. And we're just so lucky to have all of us. Um, I look at the experience and the things that have been done by volunteers, by people on the board, by chapters, and it's just amazing. So when we bring all of that together into one cohesive team, um, possibilities are just unlimited. What are the other benefits of being a chapter? Um, you know, you have the confidence and the respect of your, of your stakeholders. That says shareholders. It should really say stakeholders. Sorry about that. Um, you know, when you give information, your clients know that that information has been vetted and that you're a part of a national organization. Um, this is really helpful when you're advocating for families or advocating for um, you know, anything when you're trying to provide services. Chapters can take advantage of the relationships the national organization has created, and you can create similar partnerships like that in your own communities and really vice versa. Um, some of you have created relationships that have benefited us on a national level as well. So it's a great give and take relationship. Um, chapters, of course, are in the best position to educate families and primary care providers and increase awareness on a local level. But that takes time and it takes money. And so we want to ease that burden by giving you the resources to be able to do that effectively. You know, don't sit out there and recreate the meal, the wheel, if we can hand you the resources to be able to go out and advocate and educate. Um, it also enables our organization to utilize a singular brand and messaging, um, creating visibility for all chapters in the organization as a whole. Um, the other thing that's a benefit is really you know, we come together and we share information. So as people call our national office for support, we offer counseling, we offer different types of support here, but we then connect those people to their local chapters. So we help bring visibility to your chapter and we help bring people to you and, and make that connection. And again, the same thing. We have um, families and, and providers and medical professionals who have come to us through the connections at the chapters as well. So again, a great partnership. And the National Office sends out packages of hope and other resources. And so again, these are resources that the chapters don't have to spend money on to develop, to vet, to mail. These are all taken care of for you by the National Office. And I think last but not least, chapters are not alone. And that's one of the really um, important things that we want to focus on is bringing all of you together and again, leveraging the resources, the information, the experience that all of us have to move our organization forward. Um, you're not alone. You're a part of a strong network. And that allows you to take um, advantage of best practices from other chapters, from national staff, so we can all learn from successes and challenges that each other's had. More tangible benefits of being a chapter of a national organization. Um, we have heard you loud and clear. New chapters do not want to do um, to apply for their own 501c3. It takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of time, and you want to spend your efforts elsewhere. So we have taken care of that for you. We are applying for a national group 501c3, which means that all of our official chapters will be able to utilize that 501c3 as well. 
We are also looking into being able to provide a consolidated 990 so that chapters won't have to do their own 990s. Um, that's going to take some coordination of information, but we are willing to take that on and help you with that. We also provide liability insurance for the organization and its events. And that's another area where we have found that the importance of leveraging the bulk of what we do is really beneficial. For example, we have one chapter that every time they do an event, they have to pay $600 to get a certificate of insurance. It costs us $100. So we have a considerable amount of savings to the chapters by utilizing our liability insurance and passing those savings on to you. You also have the benefit of a strong corporate identity, consistent messaging and branding, and we um, have been so fortunate to have Laura and Ben. They've been working really hard on resources for us that will really um, help us be able to share that messaging and branding and bring more visibility to our organization. Our organization has one logo used nationwide. We also, as you'll see in coming slides, have one website that will be able to be utilized by chapters nationwide with customizable sections for individual chapters. And we're providing greater visibility via social media. For example, we are initiating a blog. We have a new Facebook page, um, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. And I wish I would have thought to have asked Ben for the numbers because just in the couple of months that Ben has been here, our Facebook numbers have tremendously increased. So we're really pouring some resources into things that are going to bring more visibility and awareness to our organization. Um, we will also, the National Office will also take care of registration as a charitable organization in all states that require registration. So all of our official chapters operating underneath our umbrella will no longer have to register in their own chapter in their own state. You also will no longer have to pay us the annual state registration fee. So hopefully those of you who are on mute are saying, yay, one more fee we don't have to pay. <laughs> um, we are also going to give you written guidance. Um, again, it's important to us that you're able to spend your time doing the things that you want to do, and that's reaching families, fundraising, providing the support that you need to in your local community. It's not figuring out, well, how do I go find volunteers and how do I retain them? How do I do a fundraising event? So we're going to give you guidance for each one of these areas. We're going to give you a chapter operations manual, volunteer administration manual, fundraising guide. And for every fundraising event we do, you're going to get a kit that says, here's how you do it. We're going to give you a finance and accounting manual. If your chapter is taking in money, we're going to make that easy for you. A corporate brand identity guide. Here's the logo. Here's the branding and messaging. Here's how those can be used. A human resources handbook. Some of you have paid staff. Others have volunteer staff. So we're going to give you a human resources handbook template that you can use for guidance in human resources. We also have a parent mentoring program kit and are developing a media kit. Here's press release templates. Here's information for you to be able to reach out to your local media. The National Office also is going to be offering much more consistent communication communication between the national office and its chapters, between our organizations and our members, our providers, our medical professionals, um, people with PWS, our donors. We're going to publish an organizational directory so that you know who to call and how to reach them. And we're going to publish communications calendars that are developed in conjunction with chapters to highlight a plan for local and national messaging to donors and members. So let's say, for example, that you have a um, hundred families in your chapter, but you're not sure um, the best way to reach out to them, what's the message that I want to send to them, you know, who has the time to sit down and come up with messaging or, or newsletters, um, let alone send them out on a consistent basis. So we're going to give you the opportunity to work with us so that we can send out those communications for you or we can include you in the other communications that we do so that if you're reaching out once a month to your stakeholders, maybe we reach out to them as well once a month with a national message on behalf of the entire organization. But we give you a calendar so we're not all reaching out at the same time. More benefits of being a chapter of our national organization. 
we're going to give you a contact person at the national office who's responsible for leading all of your priorities. Um, one of the things that was done, I believe, last year was a survey of the chapters to find out you know, what are the things that keep you awake at night, what are the things that are really a priority to you. And this included fundraising, volunteer recruitment and retention, um, opening clinics, and educational advocacy. So we will have a person here at the national office responsible for leading each one of those efforts. We're also going to give you assistance with finance and accounting, which was um, stated on the last slide, I think. Um, we're going to give you a chart of accounts. We're going to give you some tools and some general guidance to help you um, take in money, pay bills, and do accounting the way it should be done for a national nonprofit organization. We are also going to give you a lot of financial development support. Um, as we said earlier, there's going to be a kit for every standard fundraising event. For example, um, next year we'll be hosting a bowling tournament, which you'll see in a couple of slides. So we're going to give you a kit that says, here's how you do it. Here's a YouTube video to promote it. Here's press releases. Here's everything you need to know to go back to your community and host a successful event. Um, that was one of the things we heard loud and clear from chapters is you want us to fundraise, but you don't really tell us how to do it. And so we're kind of out here trying to figure it out. We don't want you to have to try to figure it out. We want to make it easy for you. We have a contact person here at the national office who will assist you with our standard fundraising events. So we'll give you that kit. We'll say, here's how you do an on-the-move event. If you have questions or you need support, you'll call us and we'll help you through that. We're going to give you resources to promote your events. Um, we mentioned these just a little bit ago, the YouTube videos, flyers, um, online platforms. We'll talk a little bit about that in a couple of slides. And we're going to do a fundraising calendar, very similar to the communication calendar, where we list events throughout the year and then help you with how to plan for them. So for example, if you're going to do an on-the-move event in May, when should you start preparing for that? And that'll help you be able to plan for your entire year. And if you have volunteers, you can help plan your volunteer resources as well. And we're going to be um, continuing and growing the mentoring and assistance that we've been giving during the formation of new chapters and then ongoing support throughout the life cycle of the chapter. Um, I will function as a direct liaison to all of the chapters. You'll be hearing from me on a regular basis. We also have a state leaders team. Um, and those are experienced chapter leaders that are helping mentor other chapter leaders. So that is still in place. And they are eagerly working with chapters um, to help strengthen the resources the chapters have. So it's our goal to hold a chapter's hand until they are what they want to become. Um, you know, we have people that get excited and they say, OK, I'm, I'm ready. I'm here. What do I do next? And so we want to hand you, again, a kit that says, here's what you Here's what you do, and we want to hold your hand and make it easy for you um, to become a chapter or grow your chapter or take your chapter to the next level. We also offer a biennial national conference. Every other year, there's a national conference. And then in the years between the national conference, there's a national hyperphage, the international hyperphage conference. I um, forgot to put the word international on there. Um, last year, we hosted this conference in Pennington. And, um, we just saw great collaboration and results from that. So we're very proud of the work that we do at um, the National and Hyperphasia Conferences. So that's a lot of information, but there's more. Um, what else is coming? Um, again, something we've heard loud and clear is get a new website. So we are getting a new website. We have a massive redesign of our website underway. Um, you're going to be so impressed with what you see when it's done. It will be well organized, modern, clean. It'll have a blog. It'll have links to all of our social media outlets. It'll have um, RSS feeds. It'll have an e-commerce site for publication and product. Much easier navigation. I'm embarrassed to say we had to go to Google the other day to find something on our own website. And, and that was the last straw. <laughs> So um, we have a great group of people working on our new website, and we just can't wait to roll it out to you. Um, shared technology. This is something else that we felt was really important. If we're going to ask chapters to do certain things, we've got to give you the tools to be able to do that. So we do have DonorPerfect, which is our database of donors and other stakeholders. And we are able to share that um, database so that we can help you track your donors. 
We also have QuickBooks, which is an accounting tool, and we have someone reworking our chart of accounts in the way that we use QuickBooks so that we can help those chapters who don't have an accounting system in place by doing your accounting for you. We have First Giving and other event informational tools, and you'll see more about First Giving in just a few moments. We will be developing an intranet for sharing information within the organization. We'll have a place that you can go to download the most current um, brochures and, and flyers where you can download the most recent copy of the HR manual, the fundraising guide. Any tools that we have that are internal to our organization, we will have a place for you to go get it. And then we're also looking at what's the best solution for our resource database. Webinars, and we've had a lot of requests to increase the number of webinars that we offer. And in part of our goal of reaching as many people as possible, we're going to be putting out more webinars this year. Um, they will deal with subjects such as education and awareness, behavioral management geared towards parents, behavioral management geared towards providers, and who knows what else. Um, we're hoping that you will come back to us and say, great, we'd love for there to be a webinar. We'd love to share it with all the people in our community. Here's what we'd like the subject to be. So um, do some thinking on what types of webinars and information you feel would be useful and let us know. And we will definitely look into that. We also are developing a formal recognition, recognition program for all paid and volunteer staff of the organization. Um, we have volunteers that have been with us um, 30 years or, or more. We have a paid staff person who's been here for 30 years. And we want to be able to recognize each and every one of you for your hard work, whether it's your first year, your fifth year, or your 50th year. We're also going to be sending each one of our official chapters um, charter certificates um, that you can show that shows you are a chapter of the national organization. And then lastly, we are going to be holding um, individual chapter discussions. Being as new to I, as I am to this organization, it was really important to me um, to get to know all of you and to understand the challenges you think we have um, on a national level as well as on a local level the needs that you're seeing from stakeholders in the community you serve, and are those needs that you feel like our organization as a whole is addressing? Um, what resources do you need to be successful? So within the next week or so, you'll be getting some information from me and asking um, you to schedule a time for us to talk via the phone. So I hope you will take the time and schedule that. And I really would appreciate the opportunity to learn more about you, learn more about your chapter, and learn more about the things that you're doing. So we've given you a lot of information about all the things that National wants to do to help you. And so I know that you're asking, well, what do you expect in return? We expect our chapters to utilize the branding and the identity tools that we're giving you. And part of that's because we want people to know who PWSA is. No matter what state, no matter what community, no matter whether it's the, off, the national office or a community chapter, um, who are we? And when we look at a logo, when we look at our branding and our messaging, we want everyone in the country or in the world to know exactly who we are. We want you to continue delivering programs and services in your local communities that are affected by PWS. We also need your help developing resources in your communities to support the needs of those who are affected by PWS. Um, so many times we get calls from people and they say, you know, I live in New Mexico. Do you know of a psychiatrist or um, a provider who has experience with PWS that you can refer me to? Well, we may not have those types of resources here or that information here. But those of you who are out there working with providers and professionals do. So we need your help in developing local resources and then sharing that information with us so that we can help connect um, your families and connect you with those types of resources. We're going to ask you to share best practices. If you hold an event, if you um, advocate, if you do anything at all and you have found that it's wildly successful or, oh my gosh, no one should ever do this again, we want to know that because chances are there's another chapter out there who is going through the same thing, who needs a solution, or who is about to embark on that same kind of a challenge and we want to help them. So share, share the, the um, experiences that you're having 
and help other chapters with those same experiences. We're also going to ask you to support the national office by investing in all of the resources that we're developing for you. There's a cost to the resources. So we're going to ask that 30% of the net revenues go to the national office, but in return, 70% of those revenues are going to be retained by you. And you're going to hear um, from a chapter shortly who's been able to be really successful at fundraising and what that chapter has done in their local communities with the money that we've raised. Um, we have chapters who have raised money and send all of it to us. We have chapters who've raised money and send all of it to research. Um, we have some chapters who are doing education, but they're not doing fundraising at all. So we're going to talk in a minute about why is fundraising so important. Um, but we do want you to understand why the sharing of revenues is important. You know, we have a national staff that is here who's willing to guide you, and we are pouring resources into you over this next year to help you be successful and to help strengthen our entire organization. So that revenue sharing plan is going to help us continue to be able to do that. However, the better part of it is as we help you grow and help you with your fundraising efforts, you're going to have even more money to be used in your local communities. And again, I think once you hear from Lisa, you're going to be amazed at what can be done. So why is there a focus on chapter fundraising? Um, we're not a government agency. We do not have money handed to us. So we depend entirely on donations, grants, and other revenue generating activities. Um, in order for us to meet our mission, we have to be able to meet our financial obligations. A, ch a chapter that participates in and succeeds in fundraising can do anything. You can offer needed programs and services in your local community. You can send people to the national conference. You can host or participate in regional and state conferences, and many of you have wonderful, wonderful conferences out there that um, states should be attending, chapters should be attending. Um, you can invest in the chapter infrastructure. You know, is there human or physical resources that you need as you grow? And again, you can support the expenses that the national office incurs by providing tools and resources to you. So a lot of information, and you've been hearing me talk for a while. I'm going to hand this over to Lisa Thornton, who is going to share the wonderful success that they have had in Utah. Lisa. Hi, everyone. It's fun to be back with everybody again. And I'm so impressed with Beth Bush and all the work she's doing. So I think we can all be excited about the direction that the national group is taking. Um, so we have found in Utah that we all benefit if we can find ways to give back immediate concrete benefit to families from fundraising. We find that families participate more the next time if they've received some benefit. We also find that the extended family and friends are touched by the help and care that their family has received, and then they help and participate as well. And this cycle builds momentum and has greatly benefited everyone in Utah. <clears throat> A sample of the direct benefit that we've given families in our state is as follows. We pay all but a small deposit for our youth to attend a week-long summer camp in a beautiful mountain setting in Utah. Together, the kids all fish and swim and hike and ride horses and enjoy each other immensely without their parents. The youth feel bonded to each other and often email and Facebook with each other from the camp over the course of the year. The parents get a week of respite in the summer and many plan a family trip for that week. Utah also pays for a fine arts summer camp for smaller children up through, actually up through adults to attend at a nearby university. We bought all the families an iPod for Christmas a few years back and I think those of you who have iPods, iPads, sorry, for your children with Prader-Willi syndrome, you're, it's just a miraculous device for them. We bought specialized bikes for the kids one year. We Now, this is kind of <laughs> silly, but we bought bidets to stick on the toilets to help clean the children easier, which, you know, for some parents, that was huge. We give respite money to our families, especially new families who have babies that are coming home from the hospital. And we encourage the families to accept the stipends of about $1,000, and we renew that again if they need it. But they use that money to hire a housekeeper or other helpers or babysitters to care for their children so they can get out with their spouse and have a break once in a while. <clears throat> and we encourage all the families to accept it regardless of their financial situation. We have a wonderful swim party in the summer 
along with races and prizes and a tasty lunch all provided by the Utah organization. We also hold a Christmas party with a great lunch and fun and games and entertainment. And Santa comes and brings gifts to everyone. And again, this is all provided by the organization. We hold a conference annually and bring in a Prader Willie expert from around the country each year. And these experts and physicians participate with our medical clinic and help the families with their individual situations. And then these experts present to all of our families. And they help our clinic physicians sharpen their knowledge. And one of the huge benefits that isn't so obvious is now these experts are our friends. And if we have a problem in Utah with one of our children, they respond and help immediately. We also pay airfare and hotel and conference fees for our families to attend the national conference. And then we come back and present the information received at the conference to our families who were not able to attend. And lest you think we just keep all of the money in Utah, we also help support if the national organization has a, an objective, then Utah is willing and able to donate to those objectives. Um, we're working on developing some software that will help all of the states. And we have all kinds of things that we're trying to do <clears throat> to help everyone nationally as well as people in Utah. So I guess my point is that when families start to see direct benefits they receive from the organization, the state and the national, but especially the states, most respond and help with the fundraising. And they also start helping more with the organization. And frankly, if you put a huge amount of work and do a big fundraiser in your state, and then your board votes to send all the money off to research, your families might not be as excited to participate the next time. Utah donates to research, and we know how vital it is. But we also feel it's crucial to help keep funds in the state to properly care for our families. So I'm not sure. Beth, is that what you wanted me to do? <laughs> um, you know, I'm tired just listening. I can't imagine how you've been able to accomplish everything you've done, Lisa. We are so proud of you. Thank you. And um, I didn't do a very good job in an introduction of Lisa. I'm sure you all know her much better than I do. But just in case you are new to our organization, um, Lisa is the president of PWSA Utah. And she's also chair of our PWSA um, chapter leaders team. So we just so appreciate everything that you're doing. And um, keep it up, because you're an inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. So now the rest of you might be sitting back saying, oh my gosh, how can all that be done? Um, you know, sometimes just the thought of fundraising is so overwhelming, but it can be easier than we think. Um, it can be hard. We can definitely come up with um, labor-intensive events that have small return on investment, but we can also make fundraising very easy. And our goal this year is to make it as easy as possible for all of you. Um, one of the first resources National has been rolling out already, two chapters, is called First Giving. And it's an online resource that incorporates emails and social media. Um, the setup is done for you by our national office. And there's just hardly any cost to it at all. And if you're doing an event, we can use that for registration, to process credit cards, to send out mails and emails. But even better, if you don't have time for an event, this is a great way to raise money virtually. Um, you can use First Giving as a virtual fundraiser. And you probably, if any of you are on Facebook, you've probably seen where friends reach out and say, hey, you know, here's something that I'm involved in, and I really need that su support from you. We can do exactly the same thing. First Giving can be used as an online fundraising tool um, that allows you and all of your volunteers to reach out through their networks, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, email, um, and send information that says, here's our cause, here's our mission, here's what we're doing. Please give. And that's, that's it. You develop a page that Ben helps you with. You send it out to people, and money starts coming in. Um, so there's just so little work to it and such a huge return. So if you don't have events planned yet, we really want you to consider how you might be able to incorporate First Giving. Um, and again, we have staff here that will do this step for you and will show you how to use it effectively. Um, in addition, other things that National can do for you, you know, if you want to um, hold a fundraiser, if you want to conduct an event, or if you just have spontaneous donations coming in, 
and you're thinking, you know, this is great that money's coming in, but I really don't have the time or the, the resources to do the follow-up. And we know how important follow-up is for donors. We'll do it for you. We will send the thank you notes to all of your donors. Um, if the donation is higher than $100, we'll make personal phone calls to thank your donors on behalf of your chapter and our national organization. So again, you know, we want to give resources to you to make everything you're doing easy, whether it's fundraising, whether it's awareness, no matter what you're doing, um, we want to support you in your efforts. What else is coming? Well, May is Potter Willie Syndrome Awareness Month, and PWSA is on the move. So it's time to start thinking, uh, many of you have started already, on your on the move event for this year. Some of you did great events last year and are already planning for events this year. If you didn't do an event last year or you haven't started thinking about this year, we will ask you to consider utilizing First Giving. If you are doing an event but you need help with registration or credit card processing or any of that, again, reach out to us and we'll help you um, by using First Giving. In addition, though, you know, May isn't just about fundraising. It's an awareness month for PWS. So be thinking about um, what kind of things we can do in your community to increase awareness. We will be sending you tools that will help you share information with the media um, or possibly build a legislative advocacy committee locally or host some type of informational campaign. But again, if this is something, if you are a chapter who already has something planned for May, please let us know so that we can share that with other chapters. We're also looking at new national um, initiatives for fundraising. And you know, one of the things we thought of is other organizations have their walk or their run. You know, they have an event that when you see the, the pink ribbon, you know what the event is. And we want that as well. We want to have a signature event where it just becomes so popular and so big that everybody knows it's to benefit PWS. And so starting next year, um, you'll see information about the PWSA Kingpin Classic. And that will be a charity bowling tournament that we hope um, will be held in communities all across the country with help from all of you. Um, but again, events like that can raise money not only for the national organization, but even a higher percentage of revenues that stay in your community so that you can do the types of things for your constituents that Utah and other chapters have been doing already. And we know a lot of you, we know it's not just Utah, although Utah has done a wonderful job. There are many of you who could get on the phone right now and tell us the great things that you're doing in your community as well. So we thank all of you for your efforts. And again, we just want to be able to support those efforts and help you grow even more. Um, additional financial development initiatives include online product sales. Um, you'll see a great e commerce store coming. We will be hosting a Turvis Tumblr art contest and Tumblr sale. And we're also doing a big push for donor cultivation and data collection. And I really kind of combine two things there. Um, in terms of data collection, you know, the easiest way to fundraise or to get information out is to do it electronically. There's just so little cost. So we are encouraging people to, or chapters, to get email addresses from all the people you interact with, whether it's your volunteers, families that you're supporting, um, donors, anyone at all who's coming to your events, get their emails, share them with us, and let us help you cultivate them as donors. And we're looking at other donors as well. You know, are there people who've given $100 in the past who might be interested in giving $500 and they've just never been asked? Um, do you have resources in your community? Maybe you have the headquarters of a large company there. Maybe you have a family that you know would be willing to donate um, if you had someone who was experienced with major gifts and knew how to make the ask. So we ask that you work with us and let us, again, just support what you're doing and help you with those kind of things because we have staff that that's their expertise, that's their knowledge, and they're willing to help you raise that kind of money. And we're also looking at a possible 2014 Valentine's Day event, like a nice gala with chocolate and champagne and just a really um, great event that we um, can do nationwide. Not till next year, though, of course. Um, next on our list to talk about is the 2013 National Conference. Um, so this is a slide that just talks in general um, about the conference and all the things going on. It's a three-day event um, attended by so many people. There's a scientific day, a professional provider's day. There's the general conference. 
There's a chapter leaders day. Um, there's programs for children. There's um, sibling programs to keep your children busy while your other children are in session. I mean, there's just so much going on. There's the gala, the exhibits, the store. Uh, it's an exciting, exciting time. This will be my first national conference for PWSA, and I, I just can't wait for November to get here. Um, to save the date, the conference will be November 7th through the 9th in Orlando. Um, this is just a general idea here of what goes on. Um, the first day is the chapter leaders, providers, and scientific day conferences. Um, the chapter leaders meeting, um, which is a, just a great time for an interchange of ideas. Friday is the general conference with the gala afterwards. Saturday continues with the general um, conference and then a grand finale at the end. We will open registration up in June, but it's not too early right now to start thinking about who from our chapter can attend? What families would be interested in going? What fundraising can we do to send as many families as possible to conference? Um, it's your national conference, your national organization. This is the opportunity to hear the latest in medical and behavioral solutions, um, to network with other families and professionals, to make connections with other chapters, to engage with other chapter leaders, and just get really energized by all the wonderful things going on in the country and what you could be doing in your area as well. So this was a lot of information. Um, I think that Julie has been taking some questions as we've been talking. And Julie, do you want to open it up for Q&A or do you want to field some of the questions that you've received? Yes, we have some questions already and I'll encourage folks to continue sending those in. We have two or three to get started. Um, first, Beth. Will there be any security associated with the websites that the individual chapters will be able to utilize? For example, if we want to use the website to allow for members to pay dues or access a sharing list, can the appropriate level of security be put in place with what is intended for the chapters to use? Yeah, absolutely. The security was one of our priorities. Um, you know, there's a place on the website where um, we enter some medical information. There's definitely the processing of credit cards. So we will make absolutely sure that the website is secure. We're also looking at what needs to be on the website and what doesn't. Um, so when you talk about a sharing list, you know, if we're talking about sharing information about our families with our own internal organization, um, you know, we will have an intranet site, a site just for the internal use of our chapters and national organization. So that's not something that or that's something that may or may not be connected to the actual national website. But yes, definitely security is a priority. Okay. <clears throat> and will these webinar slides be available for the chapters to use after this evening? Absolutely. Um, Julie helps with, with the technical things. She's a little more familiar. I will make the presentation available to her and she can send it out to you or um, post it, but we'll definitely make it available to you. This question is, kind, is, is probably directed most to Lisa. Um, how many families are served by the Utah chapter, Lisa? We have, sorry, let me move away from my computer. We have 80 families that we take care of. And then we have um, quite a few more families that are in the group homes, some older adults that we also watch over, but those aren't counted in that amount. So we have about 80 that we take care of. Doak? Um, let's see. Do we have any other questions? So. Um, is it envisioned then that every chapter will give 30% of all that they raise whether or not they use Nationals fundraising mechanisms, Beth? Yeah, I think that's a great question and the answer is yes um, because this is a national headquarters that's here supporting you. Um, whether or not you choose to participate in, in the fundraising tools and resources, you still have a national organization that's providing crisis and medical and family support that's developing brochures and information, that's supporting all of the scientific and medical committees. There's just a tremendous amount of work done at the national office and a tremendous amount of resources put into that to support the entire organization. So that 30% is the chapter's way of help recovering that cost and ensuring that the national headquarters stays here to keep 
providing those services and that support. All right, what will happen to those chapters who have spent a lot of money on their chapter's website? Will we be able to link but still maintain our own? Yeah, I think those are definitely conversations that we'll have. Um, you know, a lot of what we're doing right now is in the conceptual stage, and we definitely felt like um, redoing the national website was a priority. Um, you know, we are looking at ways that we bring more visibility to the, the organization as a whole, and we have a strong identity that people know. Um, so I think that those are conversations that we will have, and we will find a solution that works best for everyone. And I, I now have two questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, I think you know, some of the things that we need to look at, though, I look at some of the chapter websites, and I see a local logo. I don't see a logo for the national organization. I don't see a link back to the national organization. So I think we want chapters to have resources that are meaningful to them and that have a good return on investment, but we want to make sure that our organization is completely linked um, from chapters to national and vice versa. Okay. Um, will chapters be able to use the national liability insurance for their May 2013 fundraisers? They will. If they need a specific certificate of insurance, there's a cost of, um, it's either $100 or $106 to us, and so we've been taking that. Um, some of the chapters have paid that to us. Some of the chapters, we just take it out of um, the cost for the event, but we definitely will um, provide those certificates of insurance if you need them. And yes, you fall under our liability insurance. We are excited to use DonorPerfect. Will we get specific instruction regarding what information you need for each donor and how we can use that? Will we be able to use it by May for our fundraiser? That is a very good question. And I, Ben is shaking his head yes. <laughs> uh, ben is really our donor perfect guru. Um, so if we have some specific questions about donor perfect, we will um, let's encourage all the callers to get in touch with Ben afterwards. But yes, um, we will be giving you a guide on how we need the information to look to be able to enter it into the system, um, because it does have to be entered a certain way so that we can get reports out of it. So we'll provide you with that guidance. And back to the website um, issue, do you envision a maintenance fee for the chapter's website? No, that's part of what that 30% is for, is to help us maintain all of the resources. So there will be no extra fees. Will established chapters that already have an existing 501c3 be permitted to continue to use that, or will they need to switch to the national one? They can use it if they no longer want to do their own 990, then they'll need to switch and use ours so that we can do one consolidated 990 for the entire organization. If they want to um, continue doing their own 990, then they can keep their own 501c3. Is the current 10% that chapters give to PWSA USA still in effect, as well as the additional 30% from fundraising? No, we're just changing it from 10 to 30. Um, some chapters have on the move events already scheduled and they have written agreements that they're using from last year, and we will honor all of the written agreements that are currently in place for the on-the-move event. But for future, going forward, it will be 30% versus the 10, not in addition to the 10. Okay. I have two questions for Lisa um, about Utah. Let me scroll back to them. Well, first, before I get to that one, what are the levels of liability that are covered by the PWSA USA insurance? I don't have that information in front of me right now, but if someone has a specific question, they're welcome to contact me after the call, um, and I'm happy to help them with that information. Okay. Uh, Lisa, is your, I already know the answer to this, but I'll let you answer it. Is your position paid or strictly volunteer? And how do you raise the funds you need to support your many fabulous programs? We have no paid positions in Utah other than we did go to the legislature and get um, ongoing money for our medical care manager, but 
As far as the organization goes, no one is paid. It's all volunteer. Um, and then we've done several different kinds of fundraisers. Um, we've done walks. We've done um, skip a lunch letters that we've sent out. We've done um, fitness events, kind of those kinds of things. We've uh, a lot of you helped us raise money through the Vivint competition, which we're still saving a chunk of that for the national objectives. Um, so that's kind of where we've gotten the money. Okay. Does the liability insurance cover chapter directors and officers' liability? It does. Our, our current liability insurance as it stands right now, the only thing that we have found that it doesn't cover is brick and mortar buildings that chapters might have. Um, so we've only, I think, identified one or two chapters that have their own actual building. Um, so as chapters grow, we'll have to we'll have to address that. But it definitely covers the officers and directors. And I have a thank you for a great presentation comment, as well as this. <laughs> I think these steps are wonderful in helping us be one organization rather than just a national organization and separate state organizations. The benefits you are presenting are wonderful. So well, thank you very much. Good. I agree. So with the new website and with the page for our state, will we be able to take donations, hold our own fundraisers, et cetera, using the state website? Um, I don't know if that person is asking about the state, about the chapter section of the national website or they're talking about if they have an independent website. Do you know? Well, there's, then they also say, I'm assuming we shouldn't spend money on revamping our statewide website until see, we see what we can do with the national website. Ah, OK. Yeah, I would definitely not put any resources right now into any electronic solutions, whether it's for accounting or website or anything, because those are things that we want to be able to do for you. So if you have a need, let us know. But um, in reference to the website, you know, we're still kind of working through with developers on what the capabilities will be. Um, if you go online and you look at the Kidney Foundation or the American Red Cross, um, or there's a several national organizations, you'll see that there's a bit of a template that you can look at, and the information is the same. But if you say, well, hey, I live in Virginia. Where's my chapter? Then you can click on that. And it'll bring you, instead of showing like the national staff or the national address or a national calendar, it'll show you, well, here's your local chapter and here's your local contacts. Here's the local events in your area. So there's things that can be customized for the local chapters. Um, in terms of donations, I think what we're working on for that is when someone hits the Donate Now button, um, they'll be asked where that donation is going to go. Um, will it go to a chapter? Will it go to national? But those are things that um, I think we're still working through. Great. And if it comes into national, we would um, we would then contact the chapter and let them know. And I have a comment from one of our national st um, office staff members who's on the line. She said, um, oh, "I just lost it. Where'd it go?" Oh. Goodness gracious. Well, let me go to this one, and I'll come back to it. Is there an established time frame for each of these items, website, accounting help, et cetera, that will be made available to the chapters? Yeah, we will be putting out a timeline. And um, there's a few things we've already completed. Um, the website redesign we just started, and we're waiting on a timeline um, that we should get in the next couple of weeks. So as soon as we're able to define a timeline for each of these, we'll send it out to all of you. OK, and here's our state, uh, our office staff person's comment. Oh, just you know what? Let me back. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, go ahead. It's hard to do this over the phone. Um, it I, is. I want to back up a little bit, because <laughs> um, we do have some things in place. For example, we have First Giving in place already. Um, we have the use of Donor Perfect already. We could set up QuickBooks for a chapter now. So there are a lot of things that are in place now. 
So they should contact who at the national office then about what's in place and what they can access. Ben? Um, if it's specific to fundraising, I would contact Ben. If it's about accounting in general or another chapter issue, I would contact me for now, and then I can help field it if it, goes, if it needs to go to someone else. Excellent. Just a comment. Beth is doing, this is from one of our office staff personnel in Sarasota. Beth is doing a fabulous job. This is exciting, and being part of the national office staff, I am so eager and glad to help support our state chapters for all of our PWS families. Awesome. We do have an absolutely wonderful office staff. I can't even, that, those adjectives don't even cover it. Okay, with the national group filing the 990 for all of us, what year will that begin? That is a very good question. Um, and I'll tell you who all these great questions are from, that doggone Lisa Thornton with all of her great questions <laughs> and her great events. Yeah. I can actually, that's the only questions I can see, so I knew it was her, and if I could kick her under the table, I would. You know, they're really good questions, and I appreciate her asking them. Um, I think we're going to have to get back to you on that one. We have to have some form of reporting from the chapters so that we're able to do the 990, a consolidated 990. So I don't know if that's something that we can put together this for. We wouldn't be able to do it for the 2012 year, but for the reporting we do next spring that's for 2013, we would be able to do it by then. Unless somebody else wants to send in a quick question, I think we have answered all the ones that have come through. Just for one, let me see. Okay. When will the 501c3 be available? Arkansas is waiting to start our chapter and will wait until it will be done by you. Uh, they can use our 501c3 now. Right now, so don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> Move forward. Yeah. And I will post this to the chapter leaders group and um, we, we may have a recording of the presentation. If that comes through, I will let you know that as well. But we will definitely be posting the entire um, slide presentation, including this great um, phone and contact list at the end um, to the chapter leaders group. Fabulous. Well, if no one else has questions, I'm going to turn it back over to Dale and Dottie. But Julie, thank you so much for your help organizing this. And again, just so many thanks go out to all of you and the hard work that you're doing um, in the chapters, the volunteers, um, and the staff at the national office. I just couldn't be more proud of each and every one of you. So thank you all for giving your time this evening, for sharing your questions, um, and again, for just everything you do every day. Dottie. This is Dottie. Uh, I just continue to be amazed at uh, our national office team and everything that is being done. What an incredible crew. But I'm also so inspired by what all is going on out in the state chapters. Uh, you all inspire and motivate us and uh, make us want to push harder to do more. So um, thank you again for coming, for spending your time. And I uh, just want you to know that we're incredibly proud to be a part of this wonderful organization and part of the extended PWS family. Uh, this is Dale. I'll simply uh, thank everybody for being on board and, and thank our tremendous staff in Sarasota and our volunteers. i uh, been around a number of organizations. I've never seen people with, with more subject matter expertise than we have at National. What we do is very, very unique and it's very needed and, and it's, it's just so important to our family. So. Thank all of you for taking time for your busy evenings. Uh, Beth, thank you for a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Thanks, and we'll look forward to getting together with you all soon. Contact us. We, we'd love to hear from you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.